Welcome to Ground Control. I have the Crossover RX XR602T Diversity S Bus Receiver. This is courtesy of Crossover RX. I want to thank them for sending this for review. It comes with a handy dandy little card that shows you it has all the ports labeled, including the bind plug. Um, you can also set this up with Betaflight, and it has Betaflight settings on here as well, and the CLI commands to enter for this board. I have the DSM-2, DSM-X version of this SBUS receiver, and it comes in several different protocols, and I have links in the show notes to, uh, to those different protocol versions of this board. It is a full-range diversity antenna nano SBUS receiver. I have it installed in my T33 for testing, for doing field testing. I want to give you some information on it. It is tiny. It is a 14 channel and the size of the board, you know, not counting the antennas, is 11 by 17 by 3 millimeters. It can output SBUS and F port simultaneously. It supports telemetry. It supports digital RSSI output. It's high speed it listed as 11 millisecond. It has online firmware updating and it uses uh, IPEX connectors with the diversity antennas and the antenna length is um, 60 millimeters to fall or 160 millimeters. So I guess you can get one with some really long antennas on it. It says it's at 5 volt, it weighs 0.8 grams. It's it is tiny and it has an effective distance of greater than 2,500 meters. Okay, so now that you've seen all the images that I want to put up on the screen to show you all this, the way that you bind to it is you power on the receiver and, and you want to uh, push the bind button in and hold it for two seconds and then release it. You should get a fast flashing red LED on the board and then set your transmitter up into bind mode they should bind up just fine make sure that everything is working make sure that your prop is removed from your motor make sure your motor spins up all your control services are working and then what I do is I power it off power it back on let it bind back up to the transmitter and record all of my settings you know my, my current output on all my channels and then what I do is I test failsafe on it, and failsafe worked just fine after doing that. So, so no, no problems there. All right, so let's take this receiver in this plane. Let's take it out. I, I think I threw up a picture too of showing you how the receiver is installed in the plane. I just have a little Velcro strap uh, going around that little tiny receiver to hold it in place. I've got my one antenna coming out the side of the fuselage and one coming up in the back of the canopy. So 90 degree offset and away from all the electronics, we should not have a problem. So let's take the T33 out and launch it and make sure that our um, S-Bus receiver is working just fine. I will see you out in the field. I've got the Crossover RX XR602T, the DSM-2, DSM-X version of that little Nano S-Bus receiver and I am liking it a lot as well. I've got my Nanotech 4S 1800 milliamp hour light bulb in it. Alright, we've got it in safe mode. Yeah, alright, let's launch. Okay, so we'll bring it back around here and we'll put it in manual mode. Back off the throttle a little bit. That really, I think, can in um, safe mode really has a very restrictive all right we are in full manual mode now very restrictive on the ailerons and in manual mode i've got so much movement on them they're a little bit twitchy i've still got some um tuning to do on this and some linkage adjustment
Big wide loop. Transition into a split S. Double vertical roll. That was up there, guys. That pushes that pushes skyward pretty well with this full 4S power system on it. It's a heavier airframe, so it doesn't have quite as much thrust as my other 50 millimeter EDF jets, but it's respectable. Much better flying now than I than when I first brought it out, huh? <laughs> but I st still have some work to do on it. Uh, if I can get those ailerons toned down a bit, I'll be pretty happy with it um, as as well as much as I can. Like I said, it's this is my least favorite of the EDF jets that I have right now. Just it just doesn't handle as well. It's not as stable, not as much thrust, uh, thrust to weight ratio, but it definitely handles a heck of a lot better than it did. I've finally been, I've been able to get some flights on it uh, to get it tuned a bit, as uh, until today I've spent more time repairing this plane than flying it. Um, so I really... I really came close to retiring this one right off of the bat. Okay, I'm starting to get my haptic. Bring it back through here, check our directions, make sure nobody's coming. Put it back into safe mode. All right, we're in safe mode now. Uh, I've got almost a 90 degree crosswind coming in. Wow, I didn't have any wind at all. Um, didn't have any wind at all when I launched it. I am gliding. Ta -da. <laughs> well, that went fantastic, and obviously, I didn't have a single problem with this receiver. So, this receiver is going to stay in this jet until I retire this jet. I mean, that is that's fantastic. I wanted to give some in more information because I, I performed a range check on this receiver inside this airframe before I ever took it out to fly it. I always do that with a new receiver. So I took it out and and uh, took my odometer wheel and I measured off 100 feet. And so I bound up to it. I had my wife handle the transmitter for me and I had her moving the control surfaces every time I asked her to move control surfaces to make sure everything was good to go but I went I walked out 25 feet and then 50 feet and then 75 feet and then 100 feet and uh, I, I you know after I put the transmitter into range check so it decreased it I think it decreases the power by a factor of 10 so I would take it out I would stop at each you know each point along the way out to 100 feet and I would hold it and have her actuate the ailerons and then I would turn it 90 degrees and I would have her do it again. And then I would turn it 90 degrees again, you know, until, until I had it rotated 360 degrees. And then after I did that, I would hold it vertical. And then I would do the rotation 
all the way around 360 degrees. And the lowest RSSI number on that transmitter when I was performing this range check was 93 with a transmitter in range check mode. So I think that there's specifications on this. They're claimed that this receiver is good out to about uh, 2.5 kilometers, 2,500 meters, I think is probably going to be pretty darn accurate. Um, I don't know if I, I don't think I've had another receiver where I got, where the lowest number I got doing this range check was 93. I've always had lower numbers than that. So I've been very impressed with it. Um, I'm going to be getting at least another one of the DSM-2 DSM-X. And as I stated, they have them in several different protocols. I think I'm also going to order the FlySky version. And it is rated for over 2,000 meters, or two, 2 kilometers. So, and the DSM-2 DSM-X is rated for over 2,500 meters or 2.5 kilometers. So, I just fly close proximity. So, as long as I've got a receiver that's not going to have any problems at a kilometer away. I, you know, I'm not going to fly that far away, but I don't want to fly anywhere close to the range of my, my control range, you know. So I'm happy if I, as long as I can get over a kilometer or more of range on it. But having one like this, um, I'm, I'm going to be so far away from that range, I shouldn't have any control issues with any of these receivers at all. This is the second Crossover RX receiver that I have reviewed so far, and I have been very impressed with both of them. I want to thank them again for sending this for review. Um, and as I stated, I'll, I will be acquiring more of them. So anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and the, the links are in the show notes. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.